You know, joining me now again, uh, Jeff Gold. Uh, Jeff, former uh, prosecutor, defense attorney now. You know, Jeff, you've tried a number of cases, attorney of the year. Listen, you know, I'm a defense attorney, you're a defense attorney, and you know in these cases it's a lot to overcome when someone's dead because emotion plays into the case. What do you do, Jeff? What's your strategy as far as overcoming the emotion in a case and allowing the jury to, you know, reach conclusions just on the evidence in the case, but not necessarily the sympathy regarding a victim who's been lost? Well, listen, nobody li listening to the, uh, the parents there could be anything other than saddened. That's the reality of it, and that's the truth that you portray to the jury. This is a, a horrible thing. Uh, there's no way to get around that. The issue before them is whether a criminal act occurred, not whether somebody died. We know somebody died, uh, and probably a very good person died, uh, and there is no fairness in that. But the issue really is whether or not this defendant did something criminal. So that's the way, you know, I explain it. There, there's certainly... Uh, every sympathy for the victim and as a defense attorney you have to be very clear about that there'd be no reason to beat up this victim in this case there's nothing at all in this case there are some cases where the, def the defense does have to beat up on a, a victim because the victim may have been at fault in some way for their own death but that's not the case here and I would make it very clear to a jury that we sympathize with the death and this has nothing to do with us challenging the victim. You know what Jeff you're right on point and you know it's a fine line we walk though because someone is dead and as you mentioned you know that that it, it's sort of like it's not the issue. It is the issue. Someone's dead, there's a victim gone, but for purposes of the case, we're determining criminal responsibility, criminal culpability, and it's a fine line you have to walk, and if you don't walk it too finely, obviously, you got a problem, right? right it's true, and look, it's true in every homicide case. Somebody's dead, uh, you know, and generally speaking, it's not a good circumstance, and you have to walk around that uh, very gingerly in this particular case. It's just, um, you know, horrible, uh, but it's closer to an automobile accident case than it would be where you had a shooter. I mean, right. uh, what the problem in this case for the defense is, is that likely this defendant walked away from the situation. It, it's really not just the drinking and driving. While he know. was drowning, while the victim was yeah. drowning. Yes. And, and, and that's right. The cause of death here is not the blunt force trauma of the accident. The, the cause of death is the drowning. And so um, they have to get around that, that it's not just the auto accident. It's not just the drinking. It's that he consciously left the scene and likely him leaving the scene caused the death of this young man. That, that, that's what the defense has to get over, and they have to do it with sympathy for the young man, certainly, um, but they have to explain to this jury why this defendant is not responsible. They really do, Jeff. And I think, you know, to date, I, it looks like an uphill battle, but who knows? I mean, in fairness, we're going to see the prosecution conclude their case, and then ultimately, what are we going to have, right? There'll be symmetry, and that is the defendant will have an opportunity to testify if he chooses, but at least he'll have an opportunity to present witnesses. I assume there'll be issues regarding accident reconstruction and other matters to put out there, and we'll see if it's the equalizer and how ultimately it ends up. Jurors are tough, Jeff. You know that. I know that. You know, he, I think he has to testify. I mean, I'm a big proponent of defendants testifying, uh, especially in circumstances like this. They're, they're, the state's putting on a, a very cogent case, uh, workmanlike, uh, and, and the only way for the jury to acquit this defendant, in my opinion, is for him to explain exactly what happened, because it strains some credulity. So they have to listen to him. They have to see how he'll do. I think that he's an intelligent guy. He's probably going to do pretty well. Uh, of course, no defense attorney ever wants to tell their client uh, it's a great deal when you testify. You, 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 you start the game all over at that point. And even if you had been making some points during the state's case, when now the defendant gets on, it's a whole new game. But I think we'll see in the defense case. They've got to explain how the Bentley could have done it. They had to explain where he went drinking in the other barn and, and why he did that. And if the jury believes that, he has a chance of being acquitted. A lot to explain. Jeff Gold, great work as always. I'm in big trouble. Right. I don't know what I hit, you know? I'm not sure. Right. How do we mitigate that damage, Jeff? It's tough. What do you think? Well, I mean, these 911 calls can be tremendously uh, damaging to the defendant in, in, in many cases. Uh, here, he clearly sounds a little drunk to me. 
Uh, now, it may be that he's been drinking in the barn, and that explains it, but uh, that's why I think he has to take the stand. I mean, he sounds to me, I've done a 1,000 DWI cases, probably uh, in addition to 6,000 criminal cases, <laughs> and he sounds a little drunk to me, but you so know, he's Jeff, got to explain it. You know, Jeff, what we're going to say, what you're going to say, and what I would say, it's, it's not he sounds drunk. He has been, did you see those cars? Do you see the nature of the collision? Any person involved in that accident would not have their entire wits about them, and that constitutes the reason why he sounds like he sounds. I mean, we'd say something like that, Jeff, wouldn't we? You know, li listen, uh, absolutely we would say that, especially as to the observations of the officers. Um, but he's going to need to explain this, I think, and uh, we'll see if he testifies and does that. Uh, the fact that he said he's in big trouble, it's, it's an admission, uh, uh, you know, of sorts, and he's got to explain that away. Uh, the fact that he says he didn't see another car, and then he kind of changes it a bit. He's got to explain that, too. These 911 calls uh, really can be tremendously dangerous for the defense, and in this case, I think he has to explain it. Jeff, I can't wait to see what the defense has to say.